This is super fine steel wool and the individual strands are just a few microns thick. So that's a few thousandths of a millimeter. And it looks like fur, you know, but I mean, even fur is tens of microns, whereas this is even thinner than that. And it looks amazing, but when it really shines, literally, is when you put it in a microwave. Isn't that beautiful? This is actually about a sixth of normal speed. It's slightly slow-mo. Here it is at full speed. I really just wanted to show you that because it's so pretty, but thinking about it, it also gives me an opportunity to clarify something that I talked about in a previous video, and it gives me the chance to answer something that has been niggling at me for a while, and I think I have the answer to. So um, the clarification, for, I mean, let's call it what it is, it's a correction. So in a previous video, uh, the one about CDs in a microwave, I talked about how metals and electromagnetic waves interact with each other. Electromagnetic radiation is just an oscillation of electric and magnetic fields. And an electric field is just a region of space in which charged particles feel a force. An example of a charged particle is an electron, like the free moving electrons inside a metal. So um, this is what I said happened. So you've got this oscillating electric field uh, that goes into the metal. And so the charged particles, the electrons inside the metal feel a force and they move around. That's not really quite right and it's more nuanced and more interesting. So imagine you've got uh, a chunk of metal and you put it in an electric field. Inside the metal you've got these electrons, they feel a force because they're inside an electric field and so because they feel a force and because they're free to move, they move. And so imagine this electron moves over a little bit. But all the electrons around it are feeling that force as well, so they all kind of bunch up. and because they're bunching up, well, you know this, you've got, a, you've got a concentration of negative charge, like charges repel each other. So these negatively charged electrons are repelling each other. And so they feel an opposite force pushing back. So you've got the force from the external electric field pushing electrons away, and then you've got the, the force uh, pushing back, that, that repulsive force of the, of, of the clumped together and negative charge. And naturally, you reach an equilibrium where the forces balance, where the electrons aren't moving anymore, they're not feeling a force. And if they're not feeling a force, that must be because there is no net electric field. The external electric field is cancelled out by the electric field caused by the bunching up of negative charge. And the fact is, this all happens at the surface of the metal, this bunching up of electrons or spreading out of electrons, cancelling out the external electric field, so that within the metal itself, there is no electric field. It's a surface effect. And this helps to explain another thing that's been niggling at me for a while. And that is, why are you advised not to put metal in a microwave when the inside of a microwave is made of metal? Surely it would be okay to put something in the microwave that the microwave itself is made of. That's my logic anyway. And actually the answer is, it is okay to put metal in a microwave. It's not metal per se, it's the shape of the metal that is potentially the problem. So first of all, why is it okay in principle to put metal in a microwave? Well, imagine you've got your block of metal here and you've got an incoming electromagnetic wave. So you've got this oscillating electric field and the electrons at the surface of the metal respond to that by bunching together, spreading out, bunching together, spreading out at the same frequency as the incoming wave. And they do that in such a way as to cancel out the incoming wave because they're completely free to move. 
or at least in, in an idealized metal they are. So you've got this bunching up and spreading out, bunching up and spreading out, generating an oscillating electric field that exactly cancels out an incoming wave. So what does that look like? An oscillating electric field that exactly cancels out an incoming wave? Well, that's an outgoing wave. And that's reflection. That's what reflection is. That's why metal surfaces are shiny. Like when you look in a mirror, well, first thing is you're looking through a sheet of glass, but then behind that is a silvered surface, a, a thin sheet of metal that reflects electromagnetic radiation, in this case, in the visible spectrum, so that you can see your face in the mirror. And that's what the inner surface of a microwave is doing. It's reflecting the microwaves so that they bounce around inside the box and then eventually hit your food and get absorbed by your food. So you can safely put a spoon in the microwave and the microwave radiation will just bounce off the surface of the spoon. So what happens when it goes wrong? Like clearly the steel wool isn't reflecting all the microwave radiation. Some of it must be getting absorbed because it's heating up. It's heating up to the point of glowing and eventually burning. And that's because of the shape of the metal. In this case, it's very thin. And you might know this from circuits. So thinner wires have a higher resistance than thick wires. And when you have resistance in a wire, it's dissipated as heat and light. The other reason we're advised not to put metal in a microwave is to avoid sparks. So, uh, and you see this with the CD in the microwave. The reason that happens is if you've got any sharp edges or points, like when the CD initially cracks into those individual kind of tracks that you can see, you've got these sharp edges and sharp corners. If you push electrons up into those edges and corners, then you get this intense buildup of charge. You, you get um, a high potential there in that corner, strong electric field, if you like. And that, that strong electric field is enough to break down the insulation of the air. So air is a good insulator, but with a strong enough electric field, you can basically tear the atoms apart or at least rip electrons away so that you've got freely moving ions and electrons, charged particles, they can carry electric current, the air is no longer an insulator, and you get this, this spark, essentially like mini lightning inside the microwave. So those are the reasons not to put metal in a microwave, but if you can avoid those, then you can put metal in a microwave. That's why some microwaves come with a, a metal grill that you can put in there. No sharp edges, no thin bits. Just for comparison, here's normal wire wool in a microwave. What's nice is after you turn off the microwave, you still see these little glowing spots moving around inside. And that's really just the fire triangle doing its thing. Like for a fire, you need heat, fuel and oxygen. And so the steel wool is like a really thin source of fuel and that's surrounded by oxygen, but you've only got heat at one end. So it's kind of slowly moving along. You have this glowing sort of blob at the end. It's basically how a fuse wire works or um, an incense stick. You don't need a microwave to see that effect actually. You can ignite it with a nine volt battery. Someone suggested that I put polyethylene oxide in the microwave. That's the vasoelastic liquid I used in the self-siphoning liquid video. So I gave it a go and it's somewhat interesting. So I'm gonna pop that at the end of this video without comment really. Uh, but before that, I just wanna talk about reflections. Again, we were talking about reflections earlier. Uh, I wanna talk about it in relation to the sponsor of this video. So uh, this video is sponsored by brilliant.org. If you don't know what that is yet, it's a website full of puzzles and problems. You work through these puzzles and problems and by the end you've, you've learned something. It's like, uh, it's like online learning, but through puzzles and problems. And 
I've said this before, um, I'm a strong believer that the best way to learn something is by doing, not just watching my videos. And that's what you get with brilliant.org. Um, and I, I really like the way they've curated the, the puzzles and like the, the progression of them is really good. It's not too hard, it's not too easy. And you feel really smart by then because you are smarter, you've learned something. Um, I'm really grateful for them continuing to sponsor my videos. I really think their heart's in the right place, like their philosophy of, of uh, learning and stuff like that. All my interactions with them have been really great. Um, so yeah, if you wanna think like a scientist, think like a mathematician, go to brilliant.org forward slash Steve Mould. The link's also in the description there. If you use that link, it helps me out because they know that the sponsorship is working. Um, and as a bonus, the first 76 people to use that link get 20% off annual premium membership should they choose to upgrade. Oh, um, what, what's I got to do with reflections? So <laughs> that's the other thing about Brilliant is like there's this little search box. And if you're thinking about a particular thing, oh, I've been thinking about reflections today, type it in and it'll bring up all these courses about whatever it is. Uh, uh, just doing that today, I found this lovely puzzle about reflections. Like you've got this incident ray, it bounces around, it comes out and it's parallel. If it's bounced around five times and it's come out in parallel, what must the angle be? And uh, the way you work it out is you get this long equation and it all cancels back down again. You get the answer. It's really good fun. Uh, and there's just loads of stuff like that. Okay, anyway, um, uh, polyethylene oxide in a microwave. Here we go. So there you go, some things in a microwave. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, don't forget to hit subscribe and I'll see you next time.